Hello everybody, welcome to the first professional game review between Li Jie vs. Ke Jie. Uh, I picked this game because it was one of the recent games played um, and it was I, I'm trying to study professional games to get better at the game myself. Um, both of these players are professionals from China. Uh, Li Jie became a professional player at the age of 11 and became the youngest title holder in China at 16 years old. And uh, of course, Ke Jie is one of the world's best players, holding several national and international titles and also playing a series of games against AlphaGo, uh, which are very famous games uh, today. So my strategy when reviewing these games is uh, not only to try and anticipate the moves, but also to try and understand the moves after they've been played and also to analyze the moves with uh, AI. And I used uh, Lila Zero for that. So hopefully you guys enjoy the analysis. So the first four moves, taking the corners, I'm not going to comment too much on these um, because uh, I think it's just a stylistic choice. Uh, that Kuja went for the 5-3 point here. Um, and the and Black starts with an approach. From what I've heard um, from the professionals of the, today, uh, especially from like Michael Redman, uh, nine down professional in Japan, uh, when White plays C5 and Black attaches here at D6 and White extends at F3, Black playing at D10 is actually... Uh, a joseki that favors white. The, the, re the reason being that white has a very nice base and uh, very secure territory whereas black has a territory that could be later invaded with something like this. So if black covers on top then white can connect below and if black comes from below then white can do something to escape or even uh, play something like this and then jump out. Right. So um, it's it's this this point here d5 is not considered a very uh, good approach these days. Rather, many professionals choose to play uh, the the 3-5 point rather than the 4-5 point. And white will play uh, something like this, the kosumi, or the kema, which is the knight's move. But uh, Lija uh, approached from the 4-5 point, and black and white just tanukis. So this is uh, Kuja's style, I think. Kuja is quite aggressive. He likes to take the tempo. And ever since AlphaGo, um, he's been studying quite a bit. And he's been on quite, of a, quite a winning streak uh, against human players. And I think r recently, in the professional environment, really this, uh, this idea of tempo or speed is, is key to how these players are approaching the game now. So black makes this two-space high enclosure, uh, which is characteristic of robots. Um, and white chooses to press down on the R16 group. The, uh, the AI really likes this move, uh, Q15, after which this is just the regular Joseki. And the, the robot basically tenukis here. So now it's a competition between um, choosing to play at C5 to play that play out that variation that I was talking about earlier or to secure the territory with something like uh, R4 that would be a good move a continuing move Kuja uh, decides to go with the uh, approach <coughs> settling this group uh, somewhat uh, white can choose to play F3 or F4 this is just a stylistic point apparently this loses a little bit a few points uh, like a fraction of points but uh, in the big scheme of things, it doesn't really matter, I don't think. I think this is more uh, attractive because um, of this P3 move, which is at the 5-3 point, making it a little bit closer. And he wants to have some um, dynam uh, dynamics in, in the level of the stones. If he plays it flat, then it's kind of uninteresting. right? So black takes the... So black tanukis here, because this is... Uh, not a good exchange for, for black. So he just comes into the next big point, which is the R3 point. Um, Kuja has a number of uh, different moves that he could choose uh, in order to settle this area, but he chooses the Q5 move. After which, 
um, the next sequence is pretty Joseki. But before he continues with R6, he actually pokes up at D16. Um, I'm not sure what the significance of this move is. Maybe he just wants to know which direction um, uh, Black is planning to play so that he can uh, plan accordingly. Like if he plays something on the outside um, towards the center, then he might change how he plays this area. But uh, Black chose to play on C16, which means that White can cover and uh, have the following Joseki. So this is standard. At this point, um, White has to return to this area because um, leaving it is quite bad. Uh, so the normal continuation, or at least that's what the AI says, is uh, C17, which is what Kajia plays. And then Black extends on C15, uh, asking a question of uh, to White how he wants to play. Uh, a normal continuation from here would actually be to play uh, F16, uh, and then White can try to build something on this side uh, and use this as uh, Aji in order to choose the direction of play that he wants. But Kojia says, I'll leave that for later. I'm going to jump into the next big point, because if he plays this, Black can actually just um, sacrifice this stone uh, and play something like this. And that, that would be very favorable for Black, because he starts to build up some territory. And even if White captures uh, this one stone, uh, it's not so big in the grand scheme of things. So, white chooses to play in this area instead. Um, the AI suggests that there are a number of different moves that you can pick, A, B, and C. Uh, and Kuja, uh picked B. Black chose to play here uh, first putting some pressure on the white group to say you need to make a base and also coming out towards the center. So um, while doing this I think white is trying to really build some influence like if if white plays something like this then black can play here and start to cover and have some influence on the outside while pressuring the white group at the same time. So white actually jumps to J4. Um, the AI suggests that white can actually play c8, um, taking away black's base. And that would actually threaten to cut this black group. So if black plays e17 now, white can threaten to cut um, this black group off. And by doing so, white can build some influence towards the center and also uh, have a decent shape to make life on the left side. So right now is not the right timing uh, for black to play something like e17. Uh, black would have to respond with something like e8, followed by um, some white to try and pressure the group. So black comes to h3 trying to separate white's group, uh, these three stones from this one stone. And black, white would be forced to respond with something like uh, g2. After which, black would then continue to build uh, towards and run out with his group. So this is what the AI suggests should happen. But uh, Kuja picked a different move, uh, which was to just secure the base, which is j4. And now, black surrounds, puts pressure on this one stone, and threatens to build influence towards the center with f10. So white tenukis. So I really like the timing of f16. Uh, if, Like what I was saying earlier, uh, professional go nowadays is a lot about tempo. And black playing something like this to uh, try and cut off the white group is quite slow. Um, so black would want to so white has basically the tempo here. Uh, black is not going to play something in this area to try and deal with this single stone. So now black plays some uh, response to this move. So now black responds to this move by descending at d18, which is actually what the AI suggests. 
white jumps out to j17. If white plays something like this to try and capture these two stones, um, black might not even care and just play on this side. When white captures, then black can come back here and uh, create a base for itself at the same time as attacking this one stone. So really the, the speed is much faster when white extends out. So black decides to peep here um, to try and maybe create like a base. Uh, if white comes here, black can extend like that. Or black might just play light, um, something like that. If white um, plays like that, then maybe black would come honey on the outside, try to build a wall uh, while putting pressure on the white stone. So white decides to take sente with this move um, because if black tanukis then maybe play something like this. I'm not sure if white would respond but if white chooses to do this then um, this group is quite secure and will have no problems. So black jumps into the g17 white plays here forcing black to retreat and now white covers with g16 so the point of g17 I guess is to create some Aji for the future um, in this area the AI recommends g17 as well uh, I'm not completely sure why the g17 is so good um, if I was black maybe I would play here first and then this is still Aji, right? But uh, I'm just, that's why I am uh, not a professional nine done player, uh, whereas Kija is. And uh, six, six done player that Lija is. So now black has Sente. Black chooses to attach at K4, uh, threatening to make a base. Um, at the same time as putting pressure on J4. So this is the speed that I was talking about. If black plays just something like this, then white doesn't necessarily have to respond to this. White can just connect. If black extends, then white still has the ability to create a base on the lower side, um, as well as extending out. Uh, so this white group isn't really that pressured. So what black is trying to take uh, the initiative um, by playing k4, uh, forcing white to respond to this move rather than to connect. But white just connects anyway, saying that uh, if you're going to create a base, uh, try and go ahead. Um, I'm going to fight you. But the problem is is that this is actually like a drop in the points that, uh, that Lila Zero uh, said. So actually Lila Zero thinks that this is a mistake that white doesn't have to connect right now. Uh, white should actually uh, white should actually honey uh, K, K4 uh, and really pressure the black group. Um, so in response to this uh, Lila Zero suggests that the best move for black is K3 and then white can uh, this is a really funny shape. Uh, white can um, cover on L3 uh, after which black would extend, white would extend, black would try to continue to make a base with uh, a Kema after which white would um, threaten to cut it its base short, black would uh, threaten to cut the white stones after which white would protect and then black would jump out after which white would have a choice either to block black on this side or to block on this side. If white blocks on this side then black has the ability to jump out um, with uh, this the O5 stone. The point here is so now white has to protect the cut uh, instead of cutting black and black can connect. So the point here is that white doesn't have to connect because black doesn't have time to actually cut white's groups apart because um, black has to tend to this group if white is pressuring. 
So this is a learning moment. Um, but it's quite a complex sequence to read, and if you're not a robot with the precision that Leela Zero has, um, maybe this is your best bet, you know? But Leela Zero says that this this is worth like a minus five to ten points. So black actually has the ability to honey now, and white extends. Black creates a, a little bit of a base. White says, I'm gonna cut your stones apart and black says well that's fine but I'm going to attack the your group here um, white responds because if white doesn't respond and uh, play something like uh, like m6 then black can proceed to break all of white's territory and threaten the group uh, if if white is unable to make eyes then black will be able to well, even black can cut, probably, these groups apart. And if white connects, then black can further invade and maybe have some shenanigans uh, uh, to, to threaten this group. So, And also, white's, white seems quite sealed in and black has a living shape on the bottom. So, white doesn't want this. So white defends the uh, black from coming in uh, t too much and troubling white. And black takes the uh, initiative to, to cap at M5. So white extends, extends, and white plays the next big move over at D11. So now we've done a little bit of fighting and um, but the opening is pretty over. Uh, the big points have been taken on the board. And now let's see, uh, let's evaluate um, the, the different territories. So black has some territory here uh, with some Aji on the top side. Some territory here, uh, some territory here, and he, and most importantly, some influence towards the center. On the other hand, white has this territory down here, uh, this moyo up here, um, which we can't really say is territory um, because white doesn't have, like, there's a lot of uh, potential area for black to invade and survive. So at this point, I think black is solidly leading. Um, white does have some potential to make some territory here, but not that much um, and white has some potential territory here so the, so we've identified the potential areas in which uh, each player can have points and now let's evaluate how many points uh, each of these areas might have okay starting with starting with black so here is maybe 10 points maybe 15 points uh, uh, depending on how much black can get on this side, black may have 10 points on that side, uh, depending on whether white gets the R17 or whether black gets R17 or Q, Q18. Black might have 10 points here, uh, depending on if white plays the R2, Joseki, and black has some influence here. So this is really hard to identify who will get the points on this side. It all depends on the fighting. Um, so this is a big question mark. On the other hand, white has maybe 10 solid points on this side, some influence on that side, um, but not really sure how many points that will translate to. Not many sure how many points this will, this will translate to. Uh, maybe 15 points on this side, and uh, maybe 5 points at most uh, from here. Because there's a lot of there's a lot of Aji, um, so maybe we can't even count this as territory. So if we look, black has like 35 points, uh, white has 10 points, uh, 15 points, 30 points, and black has some potential and white has some potential. So it's a difference of about five. 
So White has Comey, which is 7.5 points. Um, so it's it's a really close game, but I, Lila Zero still says that Black is ahead by maybe 5 points here. Uh, because his influence is a little bit better than, than White's influence. So Black takes away White's base. Lila Zero really likes this move. Uh, and White chooses to run away. Um, if White responds to this move uh, with something like b11 then if black caps it's really hard to see how white would live so white runs away and black threatens to cut um, but white says that's not big enough i need to catch up i need to do something here so plays on r14 to push and create a, a little bit thicker of a wall um, and also to use this as uh, in order to get sente uh, and take the corner because if black captures this one stone white can uh, atari black captures and then instead of pushing at s16 which would uh, lead to white uh, black basically leading to a capturing race but black will win this there's this tesuji here if black runs out then white can um, take the corner and also have uh, make a really weak group for black uh, and this fighting might be something that Kaja is looking for in order to catch up uh, the points so black plays s16 giving white sente and uh, you can see that this thicker wall is working for Kuja now Now that White's um, ex running out his weak group at the same time as threatening to build a moyo towards the center. Black first... Uh, so, so now Black um, is behind in the race to have central influence. So how is black going to catch up in tempo? Well, this group is quite weak. So if you can run it out, maybe you can create a wall and then uh, gain some initiative in the fight for the center. So black plays M2, taking away white space. And white comes out at uh, 07. Um, here, actually, the AI suggests that Black should secure a base first. Uh, so this is Joseki. If Black plays S2, then instead of taking out at uh, retreating at Q2, after which Black can have S1 in uh, in Gote, but uh, Black can take S1 and have a very solid shape. Uh, you, you see that White can't really do anything here. Uh, White has Tesuji here, which is actually to play here first. If black captures, then white can cut. So black will actually connect first, after which white will play uh, Q2, and then black has to retreat back at S3. And this way, um, black doesn't get that move at S1. and So it's basically saving a few, a few points. And this would be Tesuji. But Kuja says that's... I don't want to play that right now. Uh, I'm going to focus on running out into the center first. I think that's my uh, best bet. And also reducing the influence that black has uh, while possibly extending white's own. So black says, okay, I can't let you have the entire thing. I'm going to come in and break everything apart. White says, uh, okay, well, you can try. Uh, I'll take just this area, please. And Black says, okay, um, how about push here first and then create a cutting point at uh, P15, which he eyes with uh, N13. White says, I'm not going to give you, I'm not going to retreat again uh, with this move. I'm going to come out and I'm going to threaten to capture either this stone or this stone. You choose, Black. What are you going to do? Black says, well, I'm going to attack at P uh, at 015, eyeing that cut 
at p15. White says, okay, well, I can't let you do that. So if you cut now, then I'll have a good platform to start attacking you. Because remember, um, uh, black is still ahead uh, in this position um, because black can always take this and take some area here that he previous didn't really have, right? And white still hasn't profited off here, and white also lost some territory while black gained some. Uh, white didn't really gain anything in the corner, so black is still ahead. Um, so white still has to make something happen, and just passively connecting like this will definitely lead to uh, a loss. So white attaches from N15. So white says, I'm going to attack, and black says, oh well, I'm going to attack you back, because your group isn't that safe either. So white makes I space with N5, which means that this group is pretty much alive. Uh, so black re redirects their attention back to O16. Also this move, what it did, was not only pressure this group, but also create a route for the black group to escape. So black extends at O6, white. If, if white uh, cuts, tries to capture this black group now, uh, even if if white tries to capture this group now, black can cut the groups apart at 015 and it would lead to some pretty nasty fighting. Um, I don't think white can really give up these um, these stones. Like white can do this in order to create a, like a really thick wall, but at this point black would be so far ahead in terms of territory. Like where is white gonna make uh, territory, right? So white connects, say, continuing the fight. White retreats, um, and then white has to, you know, take away black space. So he's saying that if black, if you want to connect, you can just connect, but I will take this area. Uh, instead, black jumps at M16, uh, invading as much as he can, and white retreats at K15, uh, encircling this one stone and also protecting um, black from invading any further. Black has a different idea in mind. Um, black sees uh, K, Black sees K15 and says, oh, you didn't connect this group to your, your other group. Uh, and this group doesn't have eye space if I come in at Q17. So Black is basically trying to take away White's eye space. And Kuja says, really? You're going to try and attack this group? Well, I'm behind, so... And it looks like I have some stones surrounding your stones. Um, I'm going to take this fight. I'm going to save D10. What are you going to do? And Black realizes that this, this point was pretty big. And Black says, okay, well, I'm going to take some cash. Um, so you can save that stone, whatever. I don't care. So now Black is pretty solidly ahead and white needs to do something in order to win so instead of playing defensive like maybe something with like l17 um, white caps at n11 oh, strong move so now black has to do something black chooses uh, o11 but the ai actually prefers black to come in at k6 um, because that would allow black to infiltrate a little bit more before black jumps out. Like even if white plays at M17, black has already uh, invaded so deeply. Even here, black doesn't even need to connect. Black can just play uh, O10, threatening splitting these this group apart from this one stone, and also threatening to make some territory on the right side if white. Uh, tries to capture 
uh, these groups. Black can actually just extend and if captures, black's perfectly connected and there's no problem at all. But black just chooses to escape right away. Uh, white cuts. And actually at this point, white starts to get uh, some some tempo, some advantage in this game. Um, so black Ataris, white cuts, captures, and backs off. So this group here of blacks, still not fully alive. White can continue the attack and because white has been able to successfully split the uh, this black group from um, his home base, white actually has an advantage here because he can press down this group. Black plays uh, M10 but the AI actually suggests that black can play a Tessiji here at, uh, at K12 and the reason why it works is because once white connects then black can extend, white can try to cut the groups apart and black has L10 so even if white cuts this group out then black is making a tunnel by which it can actually escape out to um, his group on the bottom and this white stone is not perfectly alive either um, there would be some fighting going on so but this is a really difficult move to find in the middle of a complex fight like this so instead black plays M10 um, making sure that his stones are connected and white takes some cash uh, and by taking some cash he's also indirectly putting pressure on the black group and now you'll see the game slowly shift in white's favor so black tries to make something happen on the bottom here um, white says I'm gonna make a solid wall black tries to save this one stone and black peeps at K5 at K6 Black says, uh, I don't care if you cut, I'm going to surround your stone. And it looks like it works, but White has this Tessiji here at K10. And this move is something that I would not have found. <laughs> uh, I probably would have tried to make like a net, you know, and um, but this would be too soft. Black would be able to make uh, a lot of eye space here, um, meaning that White would be. Uh, uh, lacking in points in order to win. So white continues the attack um, instead of just simply connecting. And uh, black threatens to make some eye shape here. Um, actually the AI suggests that white should play here at this point. Um, and that would actually be much much better for white because even if uh, white gives up these four stones white gets so much cash from here and also uh, is threatening to build some area in the middle here that it's completely fine if white gives up these four stones you can see the black is really living very small uh, white still has the areas in in the top uh, this this white group is now safe um, Uh, white got some has some cash here, whereas black has really uh, small territories um, other than maybe here. So at this point, white would be slightly leading, but even then, uh, it's a very slight lead, and each player would still have to play very well in order to uh, squeeze out the win. So white pushes at L6, threatening to cut this group off from the the dragon here. Um, but black simply plays this because even if white cuts, black can make a solid base uh, like that. Uh, so white takes the opportunity to press R2, but he says, okay, uh, I need to return to this fight here. So I don't know if this was a time suji uh, in order to get back some advantage. But 
Anyway, white plays at g10, um, continuing the attack on this black group. So here, black plays uh, m17 in order to secure this connection, um, because as it is, black plays away now, then white has the potential to cut this black group off, um, meaning that white would profit uh, on the upper side. So black secures uh, his invasion of the upper side with m17. Now if white threatens to cut, then black can just capture these two stones. So, so white plays h9, um, threatening to come out and uh, kill black, uh, remove black's eye space and uh, save his one stone. And black says, bring it on. Uh, I'm going I'm to create more eye space on this side so you can't really do anything. Now white has to follow through with this challenge, right? So he plays that, black uh, Ataris, saves the stone, and uh, black runs out at o, uh, 017, threatening to attack this whole group. Uh, because, as you can see, if white just responds, white is actually not connect. So white's not fully connected here, so white plays the safe move, uh, q12, ensuring that his dragon lives. And black says, okay, now the next biggest point is uh, b7, making sure that uh, my group is, my groups are connected. Because white can, if, for example, if black cuts here, um, white could come in here and if black tries to save this one, uh, save save these stones by Atari, white can infiltrate. So black thinks that this is really good uh, Yose or Endgame. But white says, isn't that too early? Sir, I'm going to... Isn't this first? Because I'm threatening now to um, still capture your group. Your group still doesn't have eyes. And it's uh, actually at this point that Black uh, makes a mistake. So Black needs to make some eye space. Um, some candidate moves might be something like J18, something like J15 to cut and something like k13 to cut this white group off. So what would you choose? Black plays j18 and that's a mistake because now white plays j15 and even if black lives white cuts the tail of the black group off and black doesn't have enough liberties to capture the L13 uh, group like for example boom black can't do anything right so black can't cut which means that white is successful because of J15 If black had played B, that would have been too early because now white can just run out and white can capture black's two stones and black still doesn't have enough eye space. So what about C? Yes. This was, this gives black a 70% chance to win, but because white, even if white connects, black can now cut the L12 stone off, and at which point white would probably play elsewhere because this black group is perfectly alive and white doesn't really have anything to do here. So.
When black played A, the winning percentage for black actually drops by uh, 20%, 21%. <laughs> so this was quite a big mistake. Quite a big mistake. So now black has nothing in this area. Uh, white has gained a lot of cash in this area of the board. So now white has some territory here, some territory here, uh, territory here, and territory here versus black's territory, which is here, 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 and here. So white has significantly uh, broken black, uh, black's territory apart and secured some uh, a lead for himself uh, with with the fighting in the center. So congratulations, Kuja. The rest of the game is Jose. Uh, black takes and black and white both exchange the most important moves. And at this point, black just resigns. Wow. What a game. What a game. This complex fighting in the middle uh, was exactly what Koja needed in order to uh, come back and uh, have a victory. So thank you everybody for joining me on this professional game review. If you liked it, please uh, leave a like. If you didn't like it, you can leave a dislike. That's totally fine. I'm not going to hunt you down or anything, um, at least not uh, in the pandemic. So I'll see you guys next time with the next professional game review. If you have any games that you would like me to review, uh, please just leave it down in the comments below. See ya.